I go first? Yeah. I'm going to do a soldier. And I'm going to do a soldier. Are you copying me? Yes. I'm Elise Strawn and welcome back to a very festive My Cupcake Addiction where today we're taking edible gifting to the next level. We're making edible gift boxes that you can fill with edible gifts. Before we get started, I've had loads of you guys asking where my videos are and why I'm not uploading, which is weird because I've still put out 100 videos this year. So if you're not seeing my videos, you can go to the little bell icon next to the subscribe button. You need to be subscribed to the channel and then it will come up with the option to get notifications when I post. Tick that option, you'll get an email every time I post a video and you'll never miss a single one. Let's get into it. You'll need some graham crackers or you can bake your own cookies. Some candy melts, I've got red and white or you can use white chocolate and color it using candy colors. I've got an X-Acto knife, some snap seal bags, a random assortment of sprinkles, a little bit of candy tape, or you can use fruit roll-ups, and different candies to fill our boxes with. While I might be dressed completely for Christmas, these are also an awesome idea for year-round gifting. Think Valentine's Day, a special gift for someone that you love for their birthday. Change up the colors and these can suit any occasion. I'm gonna use three of my sheets of graham cracker for each of my little boxes. And because I know graham crackers aren't available everywhere, like Australia, I'm also gonna leave a template down below. If you wanna bake your own sugar cookies, I'll link to my sugar cookie recipe and you can basically make the exact same shapes, but there's baking involved. The graham crackers make it a no bake option. First of all, I'm gonna cut my shapes. So these guys are already perforated, but I'm using a serrated edge knife to saw through the graham cracker or the biscuit so it doesn't crack gently does it. Four even little pieces. And then this guy here, I'm gonna cut my graham in half, but I'm gonna take just a little bit off. There's no exact measurement here. It's like a quarter of an inch, just so that my base fits inside the four walls. For my top, I'm gonna cut a section that's about a quarter of an inch larger, because I shaved the quarter of an inch off the base. And then I'm also just gonna make up a little extra piece. This will be easy to stick together, but you just need to kind of measure it out so you've got another quarter of an inch on the other side. So it's still a square. You're making like a little edible puzzle. This is the size that I'm gonna do mine. You guys feel free to make yours as big or as small as you like. You could use whole grahams rather than these little pieces. Just keep in mind that the very, very top should be the largest square and the very bottom should be a smaller square so that everything fits together flush once it's all dipped. I'm gonna to make today's box green, but like I said, mix up the colors. If you wanna use candy melts, you absolutely can, but I prefer the taste of white chocolate, so often I'll use a compound white chocolate and just color it with a little bit of oil-based or powder-based coloring, sometimes called candy colors. Make sure you don't use a liquid food coloring in chocolate or it'll cause it to seize. All right, let's dip. So the easiest way to dip our grahams is with a knife and fork, and you just drop your graham into the chocolate, push him down, Smother that graham with lots and lots of your chocolate. Yum. And then we'll tap it off. So I'm gonna scrape the fork along the bottom to get any excess off. And then I'm gonna use my knife, because we should always eat with a knife and fork, just to slide it down onto the parchment. For this little guy that's kind of our jigsaw piece, I wanna just get a tiny bit of my chocolate first and kind of glue the pieces of our puzzle together before we dip, so let that set. And then our four little sides. When you're dipping, it's easiest if you put it in upside down and then kind of flip it before tapping it off. It just gives you a smoother finish. And then finally, our top piece. Make sure this is really well set. So pop it in the fridge for a few minutes if you have to. And then into that chocolate, dip and let them set. They don't need to be completely set here. You want them to be a little bit soft. So either room temperature, but I wouldn't chill them. And then you just want to bring your exacto and you're just going to kind of trim down the sides you don't want to expose graham cracker here or cookie here. You really just want to neaten up those edges. All of these little off cuts and shards you can remelt and use for decorating, but you want to put those ones off into the fridge so they get really, really nice and chilled before we join them all together. These guys are chilled and I've got a little bit more of my green chocolate in a snap seal bag. So I'm going to snip off a pretty generous tip because I don't want to go too fine here. I want a fair bit of chocolate joining these together. And then we assemble. So put your lid off to the side 
and start with the base. I like to put the chocolate all around the outside of the base and then add all of my pieces because that way I've got a little bit of room to kind of move them around to make sure they're all perfect. If you've got any little gaps or any little pieces where it's not gonna meet up absolutely perfectly, just fill them in with a little bit more of that chocolate and smooth them off. I find building this on one piece of parchment and then picking the whole thing up and moving it to a fresh piece to be the perfect way. That just gives it a fresh piece of parchment so that it doesn't have any kind of overlap from any of that stuff that's come off the sides. And then voila, your lid goes straight on top. A Christmas box. So now we're at the good bit. It's time to stuff and decorate. For my decorations, I'm just using a fruit strap or you can use a candy strap. And mine's red and orange. I only really want the red side, so I'm just gonna slice it down the middle and eat what's left. And I wish I had some help in the kitchen. I'm here, I can help. You're here, you can help. I don't know if this is your kind of job. For starters, I need someone to eat all the orange bit of this fruit. Mmm. Well, I can do it. Easy. I'm gonna do a red one with this one, this part. Take all my ingredients. What are you doing with my candy strap? Getting it all bundled up. A snake. You want to take your boxes and fill them with whatever you like. Gifts, candy, more candy. I go first? Yeah. I'm going to do a soldier. And I'm going to do a soldier. Are you copying me? Yes. I'm going to do a Santa. And I'm going to do a Santa. I'm and gonna... I'm going to do a minty. Well, then I'm going to do a minty. Okay. What about a candy cane? Ooh, I like spicy things now. I used to not like spicy things, but now I like My palate is evolving. Look, oh, I'm huh. putting a gift in. Now, it can't be too full or else you can't put your lid on. <gasps> like that. I think you crushed it. Huh? Once it's filled with big candy, I'm going to use littler candy to fill in the gaps. See? Like M&M's. Ta-da! Ta-da! Lids on? Lids on! Now, I'm going to show you my super special ribbon tying trick that I use every Christmas. Take a piece of your fruit and lay it out like this. <laughs> this is not fruit. It's a foot of fruit. So pick up your box and put it on the fruit so the fruit's right in the middle. And then we're going to fold the fruit over and then we'll cut it. I'm going to do it my way. You do it your way. That's what being in the kitchen is all about. You get creative, Squish. I'm going to use a little bit of the melted candy just to affix my ribbon. And you guys can decorate these however you like, like Ollie is doing. A little perfectionist at work. And then a really simple little bow. You can just take like a long piece of your fruit by the foot and loop it over itself twice. So once you've got like a little, almost like a little one of those breast cancer ribbons, just push it together and then take a smaller piece and we're just gonna glue that over it. Saves you having to tie it like a little shoelace. And the off cuts. Beautiful, what are you gonna do with those? Eat them. <laughs> because this fruit's so sticky, you can actually just pinch it at the back. I made you a bow. Thank you. Oh, it's mine. Touch, touch. And then we'll snip this little guy. Touch, touch. I'm gonna add an M&M for a handle. Here's a little bit of melted chocolate. And yep, it's gonna go there. Perfecto. Perfecto! So High five. Right. This guy here we decorated using just a little bit of candy melt with a toothpick to make a wreath, a little sanding sugar on top, and then some little candy coated chocolate chips. And we made a tiny little card. I know. What does it say? It says, Ollie shall get no presents for Christmas this year unless he does the dishes. Oh, <laughs> I'm on the good list, not the naughty list. Well, that could change very quickly. All right, Ollie, which one are we going to give to Jacob? Which one are we going to give to Daddy? And which one are we going to have? I'm going to have this one. You're taking that one? Yep. Which one shall we give to Jacob? Jacob? Mm hmm? This one, and then which one should I give to Daddy? Um, <laughs> the one with the love? And that one is yours. <gasps> Who's going to get this one? Can we give it to one of you guys? Can we? 
Well, we hope you've enjoyed our first Christmas video where we literally made edible gifting edible gifts. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, make sure you do for new videos every week. You can check out all of my other Christmas recipes down below from years gone by. And as always, thanks very much for watching. Merry Christmas! Ho, 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 ho. Oh.